Hey, Spielberg, I'm making an homage to you. Will you produce it? Sure, just slap that E.T. logo thing on there and go to town, mate. 47 seconds of logos. This factory waited 24 hours or more after an accident to update this board. Otherwise, he'd be putting a zero up instead of a one. Slackers. My loved one just died, swing. Okay, let's send the student film. Convenient board with nails in it makes child zombie murder a snap. Why the f*** does this kid have a bowling pin under his bed? Is it because the prop master figured since he had everything else, you might as well stick one down there? Judging just by this shot, you ate a meal of soup, bread, and beer, and your son had the plate of shaved ham and a glass of milk. Anybody who's uncertain as to how J.J. Abrams got Star Wars need only look at the subliminal message he put in this movie to get the job. Makeup sound special effects. He's the deputy's kid. So you're scared that the kid who's obviously sneaking out at night to do a movie is going to narc on you for driving a car without a license? This here is your everyday made-up conflict, kid. Honey, I love you. I love you too. See? It flows. I know. Hey man, I encourage kids to go out and pursue their passions in filmmaking, but I want to take a baseball bat to that cliche dialogue. Also, the kid playing the detective is objecting to the new line and making a big deal about it, but it's the easiest line to remember ever. <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> I'm sorry, this, just this kid in the background pretending to talk, I can't help but giggle. Isn't that hilarious? Jeez. Jesus Christ, man, you're not even shooting the train, you're just getting the noise? Your production value differs from my production value. Okay, I've gone from wondering how this derailment could impact the kids 100 yards behind it to wondering how the entire world isn't blowing up. This is some biblical shit happening with this train right now. These kids went to the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things spin-off school, the academy of kids who run alongside terrifying train crashes instead of away from them perpendicularly. All the fucking debris and dangerous shit misses every one of these kids. This camera is still intact, and in the same place after that train car demolished this entire station. Alice decided to wait until everyone thought she was dead to make her appearance. White Rubik's Cubes or something. Awesome, except the Rubik's Cube was not licensed for mass market until 1980, the year after this movie takes place, which means this reference is at best some kind of proof of time travel. Is that him? Yeah. It's him. Child film prodigies write the pronoun game into their off-camera dialogue. Come the f*** on with this guy surviving a head-on train collision. I guess Samuel L. Jackson is trying to find this guy in another movie somewhere. And yeah, he looks a little bloody, a little roughed up. Definitely not okay, but he looks way better than 99.9% .9 of humans would look after a crash like this. They will kill you. God damn it. I guess the guys looking for E.T. managed to go so far they entered a new movie. I would also like to point out that this car Super 8 conveniently misses any damage. And the military dudes will be completely unable to find a distinctly yellow car in a small town. I never should have done this. Damn right. You always have to assess the risk of trucks crashing head-on into speeding trains before you go anywhere, but especially when you go to a train station. Metal Rubik Death Star thing is definitely going haywire, but the plot is not ready for it to do anything special yet. Jennifer Ann, not fair, it's Africa. Mom's racist. Hot older sister would be excellent at cinema sins. Hey, tell the twins to stop. Are you not the dad here? You wanna go back? Holy sh**, that's mint. Movie casually tries to drop an idiom this kid will now use often into the dialogue that was not present for the first 28 minutes. Oh, Dr. Woodward you. had that map. He drove onto the train tracks. Maybe there was something he what wanted to destroy. destroy. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't Dr. Woodward simply set up a bomb or some other way to derail the train other than running into it with his own truck with him still inside it? Reason. Excuse me, could we get another order of fries because my friend here is fat? That's racist. You heard what old man Woodward said? Oh, so you're calling him old man Woodward now. Like, he's the town's drunken hermit who crashes into ice cream shops and tells everyone they're doomed. He told me they're carrying mostly airplane parts. I don't buy that. Insert disbelieving sheriff scene here. Walkman. Looks like a stereo. Play your own cassette tapes. You know, the type of device that makes sure everyone knows we're in 1979? Apparently, whatever asshole alien monster this is has the capability of making all these dogs run away from this direction, but still be totally stealth enough to make its way behind the woods and throw a goddamn dumpster without making any noise until it was time to scare somebody. Also, someone is clueless to the action going on behind them because of music and headphones cliche. Is this alien a serial killer who wanted to make sure it got everybody at the gas station before leaving? Just like Cloverfield, J.J. Abrams prefers you not see the actual monster so much as you fear it without knowing what it is. Movie finally gets scary as he realizes all the town's dogs have gone missing. Wait, that's not scary. That's still kind of a Muppets or Scooby-Doo mystery, no? This is the kind of stealth this monster has, and absolutely no one has seen it stealing all the mechanical stuff in town. Sinkhole by my Deputy ignores horrific sinkhole news to pursue possible monster attack information, and I'm appalled. Sinkholes are easily the single scariest thing in the known universe, and this lawman isn't affording them the proper level of fear and respect. He was at my house yesterday morning, you wear that? Pronoun game begins to hit critical mass. Like they all just ran away in every direction. Dogs recognize danger before humans do, cliche. The Air Force, currently doing a lot of shady in the neighborhood, decide to allow this middle school kid to shoot his movie near all their vehicles. Whatever this is must have picked the locks to this funeral home because it caused no damage going inside. And what an inconspicuous place to do your alien Also, Joe tells absolutely no one about this. I don't care how bad the relationship is with your dad, you definitely tell him some like this. Holy 
This guy is still alive! It's one thing to be an evil military guy, it's another thing altogether to straight up murder other military guys that don't agree with you. Isn't this movie scary enough with the alien monster thing, without having to also create human military asshole evil guys as well? Amazing during this whole ordeal with the things and the stuff that Joe still hasn't seen this cube shaking yet. He drank that morning. My dad. Wow, sudden revelation that Alice's dad was indirectly responsible for Joe's mom's death is sudden. And after the big revelation, the cube suddenly knew it was time to insert itself into the plot. Also, film runs out at the exact moment this alien Rubik's Cube starts wobbling on its own. Well, this will be easily explained when your dad sees it. Are we still not telling him stuff because you're afraid of him being an even bigger asshole than he already is? Bottled beer, canned beer, glass bottle liquor. This guy drinks all the alcohol. Be just like your mother and leave. Wow, really cheaped out on the cliche bad dad dialogue, didn't we? Don't worry, knowing this movie's physics, he survived this. Almost as if the alien knew one of the movie's central issues was a Bruin, it shows up at the perfect time to crash the party. Some kind of creature thing appears and steals Alice, but she screams, alerting her father, who then screams her name, stumbling out of the car, only to find her and the monster gone. And my point is, none of the neighbors heard any of that Here's another thing. The alien's been running all over town picking up metal and electronics and and never once did it try to rob the Air Force of some of the stuff it has. And now, to illustrate how stupid teenagers and screenwriters are, I'm going to play this next meaningless and confusing fight in full. What's your problem? My whole movie is a disaster because of you. I know my dad's being a turkey. Whatever. We're still gonna finish your movie. It's not about the movie. What are you talking about? Of course it is. Just forget it. Why? There's nothing wrong. This is the stupidest wants to be with its friends alien cube I have ever witnessed. Also, discount Iron Giant We can still make the festival. It's not about the movie. You guys are still arguing about this? That began blocks ago. Just tell him what it's about already, dude. Jesus, teenage arguments are the worst. We saw the door get blown off the train car. In a mere 10 seconds after that, this camera stopped filming. So how did the alien get out of the car without anyone seeing it and make it to the train station before the camera stopped filming? Also, this reminds me that the movie is called Super 8, and nothing about the camera or the film has really played a significant part of what's actually going on. Why the hell did it call it that? Neither one of these kids is with siblings or parents while evacuating their town. They just heard about an evacuation and immediately boarded a bus. It took her. Thing took her? Hey man, indicate your surprise and shock. Nothing is too over the top. I bet that's where he's keeping his research. First off, how the f*** do you know he did research for the government? All you knew was he was a teacher at your school. Second off, if this guy is keeping top secret research at the school, how the hell did the Air Force not find it? That seems like one of the first places you'd look. <laughs> this guy, who has little idea what's truly going on and wants to escape military arrest, sees a huge flammable truck and forms some kind of plan, which seems excessively deadly to military members who may just be following orders. If the Air Force has already searched Woodward's house, Daddy, wouldn't they have like searched something in the school room too? Yeah, man. Whoever this kid is would be excellent at cinema scenes. Damn, it took nearly all day to drive from wherever that evacuation place was to the school in a small town. The moment he made contact, oh. I understood him. And he me. Movie steals the aliens and humans can understand each other thing from Independence Day. Apparently smoking weed prevents you from hearing the goddamn military when they show up. No. What the f***? Military theft of quarantine kids' property is f***ing theft, man. But I think you should look at this first. We definitely brought our 8mm projector with us when the town got evacuated. Meanwhile, that alien monster thing still hasn't eaten the girl these guys all love. Presumably. Why? Because we're just- I guess it was time for the alien to show up, so it did. Also, movies' villains make the same mistake as all the Jurassic Park series' villains. There is no reason to ever show a character physically puking on screen. None whatsoever. F*** you. Wait, if they had to sit on each other's shoulders to get within reach of the window, then how did this dumbass manage to climb up without help? Oh guys, they're coming back. I think we should go, come on. This guy sent all this sh way too f***ing late for it to matter, as the car is already here. He's too stoned! Drugs are so bad! Public service announcement. I'd like to know the odds of kids surviving a massive train wreck, an alien bus attack, and a war zone in what appears to be a week's worth of time. Oh my god. Um, just because you're inside the house does not mean that you are suddenly safe from all that war outside. To the cemetery, I'm <laughs> Gotta give props to the movie for not letting people say a whole complete thought anytime something happens, but Jesus, it happens so often I'm beginning to get pissed off about it. Also, movie doesn't end here with the logical deaths of all the main characters. Why is there dirt in these windows? Why are you so observant? Alice is down there. Or she's dead, but probably down there, since this is a movie and why would an alien monster eat or kill its prey as opposed to taking it prisoner? Where did they get a rope that is this long? Was there one lying around at the funeral home in the very room they broke into? It's but how do you know? Alien bachelor pad. Why is the alien here? Wasn't the military in full-on battle with this thing just a few minutes ago? How did it get here so fast? It's because the script called for it to be near where the kids are, isn't it? Luckily, the alien cut Alice down from the ceiling, giving Joe access to save her. Kinda makes you wonder what Joe would've done if she hadn't been the next snack. How is the sheriff still alive? He was one of the first people kidnapped. He must be like that thing you buy at the grocery store and it sits in your freezer for a month, and every time you think you might eat it, you're like, holy shit, I have hamburgers? I'm gonna have a cookout. Hey! 
Come on, we gotta get out of here! The movie keeps killing all the barely interesting characters it just introduced. Why would this thing eat the sheriff right now, when it already captured him alive and held him for several days for some other purpose? We understand! But not everyone's- <laughs> This works. Of course, even if he was gonna kill Joe anyway, his suddenly working magnet becomes the ex machina this kid needed. Discount Katamari Damashi. Also, sweet, now the town's water supply will be held in place by everyone's germ-ridden bicycles and mowers and sh**. Awesome. As you all know, anytime we see a movie where metal is being magnetized all over the place, we have to ask, why didn't it take their guns a lot sooner? Unearned father-son moment. Less than an hour ago, this f***er drove drunk, crashed his car, and verbally abused this girl, his daughter. But now that it's climax time, ah, f*** it, water under the bridge, right? As this ship flies off and everyone feels good about themselves because the alien got to go home, we should remind the viewers that every single witness here was shot for having knowledge about aliens. These assholes drew a chalk outline around a tiny pool of blood. 8mm movie made in 1979 has more cuts in it than Bad Boys 2. Honestly though, I'd like to see this movie more than most things Hollywood puts out. It's definitely better than that movie that was made on Project Greenlight. I guess they stopped being friends with the pyromaniac, because he surely had stuff that could have made the sounds they needed, instead of them making those noises with their mouths. John? I would have removed 50 sins from this fake movie if he accidentally pulled the trigger a split second before he realized she was okay. in the box. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Hello. Are you John? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Mr. recommends you very highly. Well, I'm a really hard worker, and if you give me a job, I won't disappoint you. What special skills do you have? Well, I just got... I've been in the Marines for three years. I just got back from a tour... At the beginning of the school year, he had buried a quart jar of pennies underneath his house. He drew a treasure map so he could find them again. My friend, we're about to press it, but the man said not to press it. But we pressed it anyway! And we ran and we hit in the giant tire. Oh yeah, and my other friend was already there. All novels of Terrence Mann endorse promiscuity, godlessness, the mongrelization of the races, and disrespect to high-ranking officers of the United States Army. Is that right there? Murphy's still great. 